Alright, it's another Antakantavad video. <laughs> yeah, just uh, getting tougher and tougher. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I'm going to title it Denialism, I think, because that's all this is. And it's the same straw man premises, um, somehow acquisition of knowledge is bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what he's saying. Acquisition of knowledge is bad because it's going to make you realize that there are problems and you're better off not realizing there are problems. That's essentially the game. The game is, yes, life is problematic if you look at it. It's not even that it's shit if you look at it. It's problematic. Just looking can get you into trouble, so don't bother doing that. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, it's just don't take the reality boat. That's what he's saying, right? If the boat says reality on it, don't get on. Miss it. Miss the reality boat. That's how you become some kind of thing. Person? That's how you become a human? No, that's how you become a dumb animal. That's right. Yes, that's how you just become what you are, biologically. You just become ignorant, uninformed, foolish, stupid, sloppy, reckless, messy matter, instead of something that would be um, more, um, more, more, uh, <laughs> that, would, that would have some sort of correlation to the fact that four billion years have finally created something, a brain, a logical device, that can actually do something truly interesting and you're not going to use it. Don't use it for that purpose. Just keep it as a little scheming tool. Just keep it as something the monkey uses, okay, its brain, to smash flies. Yeah, just pull your brain out and smash flies with it. But don't let it think. Yeah, that's how... Yeah, I mean, there's no other way to metaphor what he's doing. I mean, it's just... It is overtly um, a rejection of intelligent, logical acquisition of understanding. And he's doing it by just grossly turning understanding into some sort of boogeyman, you know, that's going to f attack you with guilt. Um, forgetting the fact that what you're looking at or what you're doing is projecting your own expectations onto something. Forgetting that you're actually doing that. It's not that I'm saying that people should walk around assuming that a can of chickpeas is a can of coconut milk. That is what you're doing though. So I mean he says he's not it's not like I'm doing this, but that's exactly what he's saying. He's saying no, most of reality will bite you, so don't go anywhere near it. And just leave everything vague and foggy and then you can just play with yourself and you won't think there's anything wrong with that because you won't see any of the work to be done you won't see anything needing your rescue suit you won't need to put your fireman suit on you won't need to put a single suit on to do a single thing because you won't see anything I'm not telling people to actually live their lives that way Yes, you are. You're explicitly telling them to do exactly that. It's just a complete lie, a canard of preposterous, it's made out of cement. It is such a hard, durable, uh, uh, undeniable canard for you to sit there and say you're not telling people to do that when that's exactly what you're telling people to do. But you can go too far in that direction as well, though. You can go too far if you just sort of say reality doesn't exist and then you step in, step in front of it, you know, uh, speed. Yeah, well, again, <laughs> yeah, you can go too far. Yeah, it's, it's, you would say it's, you went too far if you somehow made yourself, uh, you made a fatal decision for your personal welfare. But if you made a, the, the, a fatal mistake in the sense that you made a mistake um, um, based on that delusion that actually did something good, 
right? I mean, maybe it's the right thing to do. Maybe if you're a drunk driver, the right thing to do is for you to step in front of traffic before you make a mess. Maybe somebody should make a mess out of you. Get it? <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, the, the, the point is, is that what you think, your projections are, really don't m matter unless they're accurate. So if you have an inaccurate perception of reality because you've said everything's fog and I will not recognize anything, I will not recognize any of the truths that are quite obvious, um, then yeah, you're going to interact with the world in, in a way that's totally incoherent to any kind of reasonable value. And it really wouldn't matter if you step in front of traffic because you're probably a menace anyway. Tomorrow, you're going to be some sort of menace. So, yeah, the sooner you step in front of traffic, the better. In Boss Kapoof, well, <laughs> reality had something to object to in that statement, didn't it? But by the same token... Well, see, again, he, it's somehow reality's objecting, therefore something negative happened to you. And then that's the only negative that matters, is the one that happens to you. Now, what logical frickin' human... You know, what, what human that you could say has any kind of enlightenment or intelligence could possibly think that that's the end of the equation? How, do, how does it affect me? I mean, that is an imbecile's perception of this reality. And you have to be an imbecile to think it only, the only thing that matters is how you are experiencing life. If you, if you are that imbecilic, you should be locked up because you are a danger to the world. Because that's not how the world works. <clears throat> um, you can go too far in assuming that um, what you take as real is real. <clears throat> uh, you can go too far. Well, again, that's the, such a vague warning. So he's saying, you, you know, and he would argue that going too far is every time you have a realization like, Oh, the other humans are conscious. I have a responsibility not to throw them in front of traffic. Because I, it would be, it would be nature doing, you know, me, me, me doing something foolish, you know, reality biting me in the ass if I got run over, but somehow it wouldn't be reality biting something in the ass if I pushed somebody else into the traffic. Come on. Um, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but... My favorite example of somebody who does this, or it looks to me as though this is what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I don't, think, I don't think that's an honest statement either. I, I sincerely do not think that's an honest statement. I don't think you're, there's any possible way how you're going to paraphrase what I'm saying or what I believe into this crap. <sighs> Never fails, right? I'm just getting to it. Be better. All right, I believe we're at some important moment, so let's see what happens. This is just my projection, probably, but again, maybe people will catch on to what I'm referring to. Um, <clears throat> in Mendham takes guilt as something that is phenomenally real. It looks that way to me. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, but, but yeah, I think you're ignoring the fact that I basically called guilt what it is, an emotion, okay? It's an emotional reaction. And the thing that's happening before the guilt is understanding, you see. First you have to understand, then you feel. That's how it can happen. Sometimes you feel first, like something pokes you in the butt, and you say, what the hell is that? And you try to understand it, okay? And then sometimes the understanding comes first, and you go, Eureka, I just pushed somebody in traffic. That's dumb. And you say, ooh, better not do that. That's dumb. Yeah, that, he's calling, that's what he calls guilt, you see. And that's, no, that's called being logical, sensible, intelligent, rational, reasonable. Um, that's your only hope of efficiently navigating the game of life. The game of living a real life in the real world requires you to understand that other people feel like you do, and if you throw them into traffic, they're not going to like it any more than you would. He argues it with extreme um, vociferousness. Yes. And he 
bludgeons people in itself with it more or less constantly. No, I don't do that. I bludgeon, yes, I bludgeon people with intellectual awareness. Yes, I'm enlightening them to the fact that, like, really simple things, okay, that they have a brain and that brain can do logic, okay, and that brain can acquire understanding, that things have properties. Some things have this property, some things have that property, some things have that property, different properties. And when they have different properties that are, you know, connected, you put them in categories. So properties put things in categories. And then the category becomes a property. See, I'm in the category human, or human in, in, in us. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I have certain properties. I'm not a can of chickpeas. Chickpeas are not in the human category. They're in the food category. Get it? God, what an asshole I am for making a distinction between a human being and a can of peas. Silly me. Uh, it's something that is real, it is inevitable, and it is immutable, and it is one of the fundamental building blocks of reality itself. Yeah, well, that's when you get to this whole, you know, it's a nasty business, the whole evolution of the matter, and the fact that the matter's doing this push-pull thing. All the matter's just being pushed somewhere or pulled somewhere. Push-pull, push-pull, push-pull. It's all being jerked off. And if you're smart, you can say, holy shit, we're getting jerked off. Rather than being something that is useful, guilt has become something absolutely immutable. Whatever. I mean, immutability is now somehow the antonym to useful. Huh? No, that's not the proper antonym. If you want to have an antonym to useful, it would be something like catastrophically destructive to your productivity. Okay, now that argument you can't make, right? You can't rationally make a video saying, my beliefs or philosophy or ideology will be catastrophic to your efficient function in the world. Now, you're not going to be able to make that argument because you're the one with the useless philosophy in terms of playing the big picture reality game. Because, yes, you're sitting on the dock. You missed the reality boat. You, on purpose, said, I don't want to be part of the real world. I wish to sit here and play with my fantasies. Guilt, if you ask me, is something that, you know, you stub your toe and you say, all right, come on, Andy, you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. Yes, and but that hurts when I stub my toe and that draws my attention to the fact that I'm doing something I shouldn't do. Whatever. Does that make any sense to you? Is that what you think guilt is? Do you think that's an appropriate use of the word guilt? No, I don't think so either, right? We know that what guilt is, guilt has to do more like, you know, <laughs> it's about sticking your stuff in your toe. Is like, yeah, I stubbed my dick into my best friend's wife's vagina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then you have guilt, right? For a reason, because, yeah, you might be fucking up somebody else's deal, okay? And that's just kind of suck. Fine. The way I read in Mendham, he says... That toe stubbing is reality. Uh, whatever, yes. Um, as you read in Mendham, Mendham is saying that, yes, we have experiences, experiences enlighten us to truths, facts, um, reality, and we can recognize properties, we can recognize similarities, uh, categories. Oh, I already said it, right? Properties and categories, that's the whole game. Yes, I can do that kind of logic. Uh, it's more real than anything else. Yes. <clears throat> the only thing that's real is that you exist in this material void, and the material void has these things called feeling creatures in it. Okay? It has a category, feeling things. And that the welfare of the feeling things is important. Everything else is crap. But the feeling things aren't crap. So the only anti-crap in the entire universe is in the category feeling thing. And you want to try to interact with the feeling things as if they were precious commodities. As if they were like China in the China shop. 
<laughs> right? So when you go into the china shop, what do you want to do? You want to be a dumb bull who just waves his horns around, knocks shit all over the fucking place because you missed the reality boat, right? You want to be tripping and then, you know, stubbing your dick into some woman's vagina, you know, without asking permission. You want to be doing silly things and being a silly person. Or you want to get into the china shop and say, hey, that one's got some dust on it, and that one's on the edge of the cliff, and that one's over there. And you want to be organizing and helping out and making the china look pretty and make the china work together so it doesn't, you know, cause any kind of noises that might blow the china up or do something else to make all the china fall off the shelves and make all kinds of crashy crash noises. Yeah, you want to be uh, an efficient interactor with the delicate, valuable china. That's what Emendum says. And we have to, that is a fundamental thing that we have to eliminate, is the toe seven. Guilt. No, you have to, yes, we have to eliminate stupidity, dumb, idiotic, moronic, inefficiency. We have to say that, yes, waste is stupid. If you don't need to stub toe, don't stub toe. Right? Not too complicated. Right? Yeah, get rid of all the unnecessary messy messy that you don't need. It doesn't have to happen. If you can prevent something bad, prevent it. Again, is this way, I mean really, if you take, if you take the rationality boat, you know, you would see how obvious this is, but it gets you right out of the fog bank. And this is just all clear as could be. I mean, it's bright, sunny, clear. You can see for miles, you know. But, yeah, you're sitting back at the dock in the fog. And uh, so, yeah, you can't, you, you just can't see any of this stuff. So it's really hard for me to explain to you this incredible horizon that opens up to you when you decide to be a rational thinking human instead of a selfish, myopic, um, hedonite. <laughs> yeah. In and of itself, wins every single time, hands down. Yeah, that's right. Gravity wins. The basic forces win. There's a basic force to the economy here, and that's just the way it is. I wish it wasn't that way. I wish we could play some other game, but this game is the game it is, okay? And you're, <laughs> yeah, it's really, 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 really messy and nasty, and you got to have your you got to have your eyes on the prize all the time. You've got to be really focused and play this game hard and, and completely or it will consume your usefulness. It will turn you into crap unless you make something of it. You have to play it hard and you can't play it back on the dock. And it is absolutely invincible. Uh... That's Maya. That's when you mistake something that is provisionally real for something that is absolutely real and you get stuck. Yeah, so again, he's not pointing out what the provisional reality is. And provisional wouldn't even be the right word. He means projected reality. So he's saying it's a projection uh, uh, you know, of some sort of false knowledge, false wisdom, false uh, edification to recognize that, um, yeah, the other sentient beings have a welfare and you can't go around stubbing your toe into their ass. In a terrible rut where you sit there spinning your wheels, sometimes, I guess, for the rest of your life. Again, I do apologize if I'm strawmanning anybody, but I think that I'm... <laughs> yeah, well, apologize. Yeah, I, you got a smoking gun right and you're just you're sitting there, oh, hey i apologize if bullets came out of the gun when i pulled the trigger but all i did was pull the trigger i didn't do anything i just pointed the gun pulled the trigger and the bullet came out yeah i put the bullet in the gun yeah yeah but sorry somehow that's an accident no 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 sorry no sale people could see where i'm 
at least where I get this idea. This yeah, time. well, you get this idea because you're desperate to come up with some kind of bibble babbly boo where you can somehow make logic and rationality and sensibility into nonsense so you can be a silly bull in the china shop so you can be an asshole you're just saying i want license to be an asshole because if i have to play in that real world damn that's work i have to have like integrity and janitorial rationality and i have to think about value equations and i have to measure what i'm doing and i can't just play and have fun like a little five-year-old. I have to take responsibility and I don't want to do that. I just want to shit in my pants and I want to piss wherever I piss and I want to do whatever the fuck I want and I don't want to be a grown-up. And that's all you're saying. I don't want to grow up. You're just Peter Pan syndroming. Okay, I know you don't look like, you know, Peter Pan, but that's what you're doing, buddy. what he has to say. Um... Now, <clears throat> what, how do we apply this, and what difference does it make if we want to know the difference between what is provisionally real and what is absolutely real, or maybe nothing is absolutely real? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, it keeps talking like we just can't, like, it's, you know, that we can't tell the difference between the moon and the space shuttle, that somehow we don't know what the, the vehicle to get someplace is, or what the someplace is, we don't know the location from the the trip we don't know the journey from the destination i mean come on we do so so quit talking like this is that confusing quit talking like we can't see enough of what's out there you know the glimmers of the rays of the sun through the fog to know yeah if i just take that reality boat and and oar myself row myself a few feet out of this fog it's all going to get damn clear but i'm not going to get anywhere just staying in the fog. But where, what about the distinction? What, what difference does it make if we're in the matrix? What it makes all the difference. Okay, now if we're in the matrix, isn't that a wonderful way to just start a sentence? If we're in the matrix, if pff, we're in a unicorn's ass. Okay, let's just make up a completely fake reality and say that is reality, and therefore, yeah, obviously, logical rules don't apply anymore. That's right, because you're not in a logical place anymore, a place that we know to be contingent on certain facts or facts. So you want to pretend up is down, and left is right, and all of that crap, because you want to shit in your pants. I mean, come on, there's no, there's no other reason to do it than because you want to evade the burden of accepting reality. Accepting reality is a pain in the ass. Whether or not we actually believe in it. Like, who cares if, if this is just an illusion? It might as well be an illusion. Right? right, right. Might as well be blah, blah, blah. All this talk like it doesn't matter. No, it, I, I frankly don't see it as a, a might as well be th issue. I'm certainly quite aware of my own personal safety and welfare and comfort. I certainly don't just you know, burn the house down, say, who cares? I don't just leave the oven on or do this or do something stupid that's going to get me homeless because I recognize that that's going to have implications and I'm not going to like those implications. So let's not pretend I can't apply the same judgment to everything else I do in the real china shop of reality. Remember the bit about the guy chewing on the steak uh, in the movie The Matrix? He just sort of says, I don't care if this is an illusion. It tastes good. Ha, <laughs> ha, um, that's an open question. I don't think it's an open question. I think it's a, that's a perfectly valid uh, uh, a reality when you're in a, a zone where it really, as a practical fact, um, has no consequence, where there is no, say, real victim in the sense of, like the Matrix isn't a perfect example, right? Because all the, all the people in the Matrix were in one reality. So in a sense, they were stuck in the same quandary we're stuck in, where one person couldn't have something without taking it from some other person. They had to be connected. Where a virtual reality could be created where all the other victims are synthetic. And now it doesn't matter. Now you can eat the cow because the cow never existed. The cow is synthesized. The, the, the flesh doesn't matter anymore, so the gluttony wouldn't matter. But in a way, the Matrix was just as burdensome as this reality, in the sense that in the Matrix, all the other battery people were connected to each other, and you could kill the other battery people. You could harm them. You could cause them um, um, 
you, you could make you could make them miserable by your behavior. There was a real thing that was going to have a real sentient experience. So it did matter. You get it? Probably not. Is it better to believe in the Matrix? Or is it better to see things accurately? Well, it's there he's putting it to you, right? Like that's somehow a question a reasonable person can't answer. Hmm? We know we're not in some illusionary world where it doesn't matter. We know. I mean, you know that. You know it matters to you. God damn it! What happens to you? You know you're. You have. You have. You know, decidedly, you have categories of of preferable and and unpreferable, and that some of your things in that unpreferable place you don't even want to. You don't even want to look at that stuff. It's so horrific. And so don't pretend to me that you don't understand the difference between these things and these things aren't real to you. You just want to make them not real to all the other suckers you plan on having them clean your shit pants. Uh, or at least understand a projection for what it is. Do you really want to see what's really there or do you at least want more illusions dispelled. It depends on what you expect reality to do for you. Well, reality to do for you is just all wrong-headed, <laughs> right? So that's part of missing the rationality boat. Because one of the first things they tell you on the on the rationality boat is that it's not about you, buddy. That's right. You're just one of the little pawny things, one of the little tiny players, just one of seven billion human players, and just one of seven zillion sentient players that's right it's not all about you if you're cool with reality then that's fine if you're cool with the way things are according to you know this is a can of soda water end of story and i uh, oh, just got an anti-bullshit man important message <laughs> yeah, yeah, i can i can post part two okay so, so, yeah, can of soda, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the, the, the argument being made is this is a rape victim. This is a kid born with his, you know, encephalitis and half a brain. And this is, you know, the, the, the reality has lots of things in it that aren't just can of soda. Okay, the reality we're talking about has to do with um, gigantically huge scales of, of uh, you know, uh, a conscious experience. You know, just just undescribable um, um, landscapes of it. You know, they go on and on and on and on. Huge landscapes of uh, of these this this precious um, sensitivity, this sensitive uh, cries for help. Not soda cans. This isn't about soda cans. Tastes good and gives me a nice little burpy feeling, and uh, <clears throat> if that's enough for you, don't even bother. But this came up in the context of depressive realism, and we're putting value on reality itself. <laughs> yeah, well, see, I mean, you know, what, what is, we're putting value on reality itself. No, we're, we're, we're recognizing... Okay, so, so to say that I'm putting the value by recognizing the distinction between a can of soda and a sentient feeling being, that is not me putting, okay, that is me recognizing. I'm recognizing category differences, and the categories have significant uh, descriptions of property differences, huge differences in properties, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not doing a pudding. I'm doing a recognizing. Is reality good or bad? Yeah, is the game, okay, designed by these crude natural forces, a playable game? A rationally playable game? Or is it the immature, just shit your pants game? Is that the only game in town? Is shit your pants and don't give a fuck? Pretend you're five-year-old forever and say you've accomplished your task. That's being alive. Well, it's one form of living, but I'm rationally going to call that stupid. Colossally stupid. That means that you have to 
delve a little bit deeper. You have to go deeper than you normally would. I mean, it's sort of amazing, right? He's talking he's going about how come it, how he's how he's going to struggle and go work harder to sit on the shore and stay in the fog. But that's somehow the efforts being applied. Yeah, I'm not going to worry. I'm just going to shit my pants, and that's that's me making the effort. No, that's exactly the opposite. Come on, I mean, shit. Uh, you know, making yourself out to be a hero when um, you left your keys in the car and couldn't start the car, and that's why the car didn't blow up or something. And you're saying, hey, I'm a hero. The car didn't blow up. Yeah, because you couldn't find the keys. If you don't, you risk dealing with things like ethylism, running across um, things like even, I guess, religion. It... <clears throat> no, religion is back in the fog, okay? You can only have the religion thing when you're back in the fog. When you row a few feet into the light, okay? Yes, all illusions in the clouds, all the fluffy little weird faces go away. And you see a clear sky, and there ain't no unicorns, there ain't no gods, there ain't no voodoo, there ain't no wolf man, there ain't no Dr. Dracula or something. There ain't none of that shit. All that shit turns into what it is, uh, cartoons. It's, you, you're just saying that certain things are immutable. The Muslims would say there is no God but God and Muhammad is his prophet. Boom, there. That's the base rock around which everything else. Right, so he's going to make that comparison. He's going to say, that's what the Muslims say, and that those crazy evolution people say, oh yeah, dinosaurs and evolution and blah, 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 blah. Well, fuck them, that's just a crazy, crazy thinking. Well, yeah, fuck them. Well, they have fossils, but yeah, fuck them. That's just fossils, it's fossil smossils. They're just as wacky. I mean, you know, so, so again, he's not making a distinction between scientific discovery and religious fable, religious connivory, religious canardery. So you just can make up a god, any old kind of god, and that's just the, no difference. Can't make a distinction between me just making one up, writing it down on a piece of paper, say that's God, and science. And you're saying this is a fair cop? This guy is playing with reality in some sort of legitimate way. He's not just fucking whitewashing the fuck out of it. No, he's whitewashing the fuck out of it. Um, revolves. So if you stop questioning things, you end up with some sort of religion or other. Guilt is no more... Oh, <clears throat> whatever. See, again, questioning. You stop questioning things. No one's stopping you from questioning. The, the, the point is, is... Um, uh, are there answers? Do we have solid, reliable, dependable answers? Do we know the camera I'm using is a camera? The matter's been configured in such a way. Um, we have machinery that forces it to into that construction, and it will produce reliable, dependable results. We know these things. This isn't this isn't something we need to question. There's no question about it. Every bit of it has been. They've been meticulously even over thousands of years to discover lensing and you know all these different properties that if we configure matter in these ways, this is what it will do. And now we even have machines. We can make a machine that will make the machine. Real than God is. Um, as Voltaire said, if God didn't exist, we would have to invent him. Well, guilt doesn't phenomenally exist, but our culture seems to require it, or our ethics. So again, when he says guilt, he's saying responsibility. He's saying efficiency. He's saying productivity. Those are his, um, that's what he considers to be guilt. That's guilt mongering. That's guilt thinking. As soon as you try to say, how do I become a better human being? Okay, not for yourself, but for the game. How do I become a best, the best player possible? You've guilt-mongered yourself. You've, you've crippled yourself you, because what you're made to be is somebody who just shits his pants thoroughly and completely. You want to be the most liberal, free, shitter of your pants, and you don't want to think any further than that. You need to shit just fucking shit. And he calls that being something called a better beast, <laughs> yet somehow being, um, that's somehow complementing, you know, this, this three pounds of, of bullshit in our cranium. And I say you've not, you've just thoroughly insulted your intelligence if you think all we're, all my brain is here to do is shit my pants. 
No, my brain can do better than that. The system seems to require it. But if we take it to an extreme, what you get is... I know this word gets tossed around. Well, if you take anything to an extreme, so again, he's just always implying that I'm not the extremist, they're the extremist. They've concluded that this word evolution means something. Pfft! Ha ha ha! Extremism! And with terrible frequency these days, but uh, you get something that I would call at least nihilism. Uh, <laughs> Irony much, right? I mean, just so ironic. The guy who has annihilated the good ship rationality, blown it out of the water, Okay, calling other people an annihilist. I mean, he's the, the you know, it's just, it's just such a joke. I, I mean, I mean, you can't just can't, can't get any funnier than this. Um, I, I mean, it's it's you know, I just thought of the you know, once again, the Jack Nicholson line in in uh, as good as it gets. You know, uh, I think of a man and eliminate uh, accountability and responsibility, or uh, reason and accountability. Yeah, reason and accountability. You know, in describing because he, he writes women so well, and I, I'm just saying, what, what is this? He's he's isn't he? Isn't that all he's saying? Reason and accountability. Kill them. Become a dumb woman and shit your pants. Oh, fuck. The cessation of existence is a viable and desirable goal in and of itself. Um. That's well, whatever the conclusions may be, you can, you, know, you you don't like the the conclusions that rationality may lead to. They may be disconcerting. They may cause some dissidence with your sense that damn, there should be a playable game here, and you know reasonably you're gonna oh damn it, damn it, damn it. It's just built wrong. It's built badly. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the, the strings you pull are tied to things you just can't pull any of the strings without something bad happening. And that's just the way, it's the only way nature could build it. Nature built a bad game. Wow. Uh, so now we're going to deny the function of our brain because we don't want to realize that. Well, that's just kind of evasive and weaselly. Argue how the game isn't broken. Don't pretend that, that, that looking is the crime. Big enough. If you worship at the god of the, the altar of the god of guilt, that's what you get. Again, he means accountability, responsibility. He means any times you make a value judgment. So as soon as as soon as you say something like, you know, I don't like it when somebody shits their pants next to me on the bus. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to do that. Um or in Zapfi's case, if you worship at the god, uh, the altar of the god of horror, that's what you get. Well, again, see, he's just going to turn everybody else's ideology into some kind of dogmatic, make-it-up god crap, when, no, they're arguing that evolution, 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 natural selection, crude forces, precious commodities, crude forces, precious commodities, and he's calling that a religion. And in my opinion, that is just so friggin' irritating and offensive. I mean, it's just irritating and offensive. And the fact that atheists can't see how that's really irritating and offensive. I mean, make your argument. Explain how it's wrong to think crude forces are likely to make mistakes. Explain how the crude forces probably did get it right somehow. <laughs> okay, but don't don't pretend, uh, you know, to tell me that I can't tell a tornado from a cupcake. You get some sort of, oh, I run up against something that is invincible and there's no other way for me to deal with it. Well, the problem is, of course, you... <clears throat> yeah, well, dealing with it is just, uh, you know, that's just sort of bullshit. The way you deal with it is to um, accept... And, 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 you know, logically process. If the dealing with means, or back to the shore, or back to the shore, let's get back to the fog, because we don't want to see the, this world of accountability and responsibility. I mean, that's just bullshit. I'm sorry, that's just fucking bullshit. 
Roar, ro rowing back to ignorance is is no answer, buddy. Constructed something that you believe is real. That can of chickpeas can be a monstrosity if you believe in it too strong. Yeah, exactly. But he's not going to explain how it's too much or too anything. He's just going to say monstrosity. He's just going to say your theory of reality is a monstrosity. Period. I don't have to prove it. I don't have to logically argue it. I don't have to explain anything. I can just say, we don't like your crude forces, God. I'm going to go back to the shore where we could make up anything we wanted to because it was all foggy. So take your enlightenment, take your knowledge, take your wisdom, take your science, take your discovery, and fuck you. I'm going back home and shit my pants like a good little minky. All right, I believe I've accomplished the task. And I didn't even have to, like, I didn't have to speak an English language or anything else. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to use any kind of falsetto voices or any kind of tremendous drama. Uh, no Shakespearean angst at all. Yeah, I did it like, like it was nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, such a, you know. I could row out here forever. No problem. I mean, once you get used to this whole navigating reality thing, you realize that, no, you just do the best you can, buddy. You do the best you can, but you try not to shit your pants. Damn it. Come on.